Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to talk about Judy Holiday, whom I deeply admire and whom I think still many people need to discover and realize how brilliant she was. According to her IMDb page, Judy Holiday appeared in a total of 13 films, only actually credited in 9 of them, and being a protagonist in just seven but her contribution and furthermore her impact and connection with audiences i believe created a lasting bond and a lasting impact for someone with such a short career in addition to this this past june she would have turned 100 years old and so to commemorate her centennial i wanted to discuss some of her more remarkable movies in fact we'll discuss five of them and also from an angle that i think is really relevant still today and that is how all her movies or almost all her movies at least the ones we will discuss in today's video they were all incredibly in touch with different key aspects that directly affected how women were evolving in the 50s because while the majority of the movies she is most remembered by were light comedies on the surface on a deeper level they talked about things that i think they require a more profound consideration and discussion and that's what we'll do today we'll talk about five of her movies all this in the hopes of igniting more love for Judy Holiday and more interest in her fantastic work. And on that note, I want you to join me in starting discussing the movie that really prompted her career in Hollywood, which is 1949's Adam's Rib, directed by George Cukor. As most of you know, this movie is a vehicle really for Katharine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, one of their most popular and greatest movies together. But this was also Judy's first prominent role, although secondary role, in a movie, a part which has been mentioned a lot secured actually her being cast in the film version of Born Yesterday, which earned her an Oscar. In Adam's Rib, Judy Holiday plays the part of Doris Attinger, who is a housewife and a mother who has just been accused of attempted murder for attempting to shoot at her husband, played in the movie by Tom Ewell, and his girlfriend, played by the wonderful Jean Hagen. In the film, Katherine Hepburn plays Amanda Bonner, who is a lawyer in charge of defending Doris Attinger, while her husband, played by Spencer Tracy, is the assistant district attorney. On the surface, Adam's Rib is pretty much a screwball comedy in the legacy of those wonderful classics featuring a battle of sexes and a couple who separates during the film only to reunite by the end. On a deeper level, this film being written by the married couple formed by the terrific Ruth Gordon, who would go on to win an Oscar in 1969 for Best Supporting Actress for Rosemary's Baby and Garson Kanan. Through their work, Adam's Rep is a particular view on marriage from the perspective of two lawyers who end up clashing over the case again of Doris Attinger. Even though Adam Tripp is pretty much a product of its time. Still, this is not a view on a married couple like the ones we can see in movies like The Best Years of Our Lives or even Father of the Bride. This is another view in which the woman played by Katherine Hepburn, being Katherine Hepburn, offers an entirely different perspective. Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan wrote other films featuring couple dynamics that are very interesting to watch. In this video, we will also talk about The Marrying Kind later on, but particularly talking about Adam's Rip, we can see a more progressive view of marriage. In that sense, the movie efficiently brings to the table topics like sexism, societal double standards, and obvious differences for both genders. This conflict is exposed through the Doris Attinger case, but towards the end of the movie, the issue is turned really into a moral conflict in my opinion, a more generic discussion that ultimately brings the separated couple together. And that is why I was saying that Adam's Rip 
I feel is pretty much a product of its time but still manages to bring to the conversation different topics that were not addressed at least not directly in movies yet the power of this movie relies heavily on the fantastic team formed by George Cukor directing Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy acting and again the writing by Garson Kanan and Ruth Gordon but also the supporting cast of a great group of character actors coming from Broadway, led by Judy Holliday, offer a portrayal that is downright unforgettable. Her part, that was largely extended again, showcases all her potential in terms of offering an authentic performance, a human performance, being funny, touching, relatable, and just plain wonderful. Seeing her play also against Katherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy, and also Jean Hagen, who would later play Lena Lamont in Singing in the Rain, a character that is very much inspired by her Billy Dawn from Born Yesterday is just a delight. This was really the movie that started her career, her career in Hollywood that is, and even though there are parts of the movie that feel today a bit dated, I believe that her performance is timeless and that's why I wanted to include Adam's Rip in today's video as a movie that sets the tone for what we will be discussing today. In Born Yesterday, Judy Holiday plays one of her most memorable roles in film. Judy Holiday had also successfully played the part in Broadway in the stage version of the play upon which is based, again written by Garson Kanan. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly encourage you to do so, but I will tell you that it tells the story of a gangster-like businessman by the name of Harry Brock played in the film version by Brother Crawford, who arrives in Washington along with his lawyer, his wingman, and his girlfriend, an ex-chorus girl named Billy Dawn and played superbly by Judy Holliday. Initially, she is really a woman who doesn't really pay much attention to anything and seems to be quite content with the life she is leading. But after a really awkward meeting they have, Harry decides that he has to educate Billy in order for her to adapt or to better perform in this new environment. Again, on a cursory level, this fantastic movie is a romantic comedy of a woman who through knowledge gets to transform her life and really understand the power and the value of knowledge. On a deeper level again, this movie had the intention, at least Carson Kanan had the intention of sending the message to point out the danger that ignorance and apathy can have. The fact that this is personified or focused on a female character, it adds more layers to this message because in those days specifically, women were also subject to men in terms of, again, the information they had access to. And that is why, in my opinion, Born Yesterday is quite a remarkable movie on so many levels. Not only because it is a highly enjoyable comedy and it features Judy Holiday at her best and wonderful William Holden and the rest of the cast, including Brother Crawford, but also because still many of the things that are brought up in this movie are very very relevant and it is also an example that no matter the format even a lighter one like comedy is supposed to be even though I think most comedies have an underlying critical message but again no matter the format you can still discuss subjects in a deeper way perhaps making them more accessible also in many ways too I think that Born Yesterday was trying to push the emphasis Envelope, discussing capitalism, the role we play in democracy, particularly again the role women play in democracy and society. Now look, who said this? The proper study of mankind is man. I don't know. You should. Why? I told you. I forgot. Pope. The Pope? Not the Pope, Alexander Pope. The proper study? Of mankind is man. Of mankind is man. Because that means women too. Yes. Yes, I know. In the case of William Holden's character, through talking to her, he also realizes a few contradictions on his part and on his work as a journalist, coming to understand that even though he wants to help people, he's really writing for a specific segment of people who can 
really understand him instead of making again his discourse and his message more accessible for everyone all of this is cleverly pointed out in the scenes they play together they are my favorite aside from the brilliant Jean Rummy game that Billy has with Harry with brother Crawford that has to be one of the top scenes of the movie but aside from that Jean Rummy fantastic scene my favorite scenes have to be the ones in which William Holden and Judy Holiday exchange their personal stories, their points of view. So as you can see, Born Yesterday has a particularly empowering message and it has to do a lot again with Carson Cannon's writing, but also Judy's performance. She is totally unforgettable in the part of Billy Dawn. And there's, I think, a final message that I get every time I see this movie, also because of Judy Holiday. And it is that it is never too late to learn and change your life. I think that, again, Born Yesterday has to be one of the most positive and fantastic movies ever made. And that's why, in my case, it had and it has such a tremendous impact. The Marrying Kind is another movie in which we have George Cukor directing and Judy Holiday at the forefront of the story. The movie was released in 1952 and yet again it was based on material written by Ruth Gordon and Garson Kanan. The film also presents another view on marriage, in this case not from the comedy perspective. In fact, this movie was in its day marketed as comedy, but it is not at all, in my opinion, a comedy even though at the beginning there are certain humorous situations, but viewed as a whole, I don't think the movie is a comedy. It is more of a drama. And yet again, we find another couple meeting at court, but in this case, they are not lawyers. They are a couple on the verge of divorcing that end up having a real deep conversation with the judge who's about to take the case the next day. And through a series of flashbacks, they start discussing their journey as a couple, reflecting the many trials and tribulations they have which have led them to ask for a divorce. So as you can see this is quite a different change of tone but don't let that discourage you from watching The Marrying Kind because it is quite a compelling movie in so many aspects. We are used to seeing nowadays movies discussing on a very dramatic level a divorce but not so much those days so I also think that The Marrying Kind is a movie that again in many ways was also ahead of its time. In this case it is a discussion of the frustrations and the expectations of marriage sympathizing with both their situations. They were very differentiated in terms of the role that men played as the breadwinner and the role that women had as the housewife and home creator, leading up to a point in which the situation is really unbearable for both of them. In a way, the movie challenges the expectations of an ideal marriage, which was the ultimate goal for romantic comedies and for couples those days. The film doesn't truly offer a solution, but unlike other films that we see, especially nowadays, it kind of advocates for again, much like Adam's rib, a partnership, one that calls for mutual support. And even though the movie presents a situation that was really common in the 50s, still some of the considerations and some of the ideas that the movie discusses are still relevant. Needless to say, Aldo Ray and Judy Holiday are fantastic together. This was Aldo Ray's first protagonist role and they are both nothing but terrific. Judy Holiday is fantastic and again, Aldo is quite compelling. I read though that the box office results of this movie were quite modest. I also read that the movie was faced with some hostility. I read that there was a committee called the Wage Earners Committee who picketed the movie's opening at Hillside Theatre in Los Angeles. And there was yet again another committee, in this case the House of Un-American Activities Committee, investigating or observing Judy Holiday and Garson Kanin, but in this case Judy Holiday Holiday testified shortly after actually the movie was released but once again it was her brilliance her command of words and her idea to play again the sort of dumb blonde that got her out of the situation so again the marrying kind is quite a powerful movie which came out at quite a specially sensitive time and is really quite a disarming film and one that still I think not many people has watched 
and it's really worth seeing. Next up, we'll discuss the Solid Gold Cadillac. In this case, shocker, not directed by George Cukor, but by Richard Quine and not written by Carson Kanan, which is also a film that I discovered quite recently. Another Judy Holiday movie that I think is deeply underseen and that really deserves much more attention. The film reunited Judy Holiday with Paul Douglas, a wonderful fine actor with whom she had shared the stage for nearly four years, performing together Born Yesterday. He was her original Harry Brock and it shows in the solid gold Cadillac because their chemistry is effortless. The movie has a lot of similarities with the film version of Born Yesterday. Also, in this case, the movie takes the topic of common people fighting corruption. What is different in the Solid Gold Cadillac is the final message. In this case, it's a much more Capresque kind of approach and it has a lot to do again with the source material because the Solid Gold Cadillac is on the surface the satire of a woman challenging a group of really inept businessmen and their lack of ethics which adapts a play by Howard Teichman and George Kaufman expert in comedies and political satires who had written You Can Take It With You which sets again certain Frank Capra tone that the movie has especially towards the end and then humorist author and director Abe Burrows was the one to write the screenplay. Judy Holiday plays the part of Laura Partridge which is quite a similar part to the one she had played for Born Yesterday. Uh, Miss Partridge do you have a question? Yes I do. It says here that the salary for the chairman of the board will be $175,000 next year. Yes. Well, what is your question? My question is why? In this case, she plays a hopeful amateur actress who inherits 10 share of a multinational company and at a shareholders meeting, she takes the floor and starts questioning the high salaries that the board of directors have. She personifies the voice of common people. In that sense, the struggle of David against Goliath. Again, a struggle that is very present in Frank Capra movies. But in this case, it's through a woman, which is again, I don't think coincidental when it comes to movies in which Judy Holiday appeared. She plays a central character and the catalyst for all the change and for all the progress that the company ultimately has. Her weapons in this movie are common sense, intelligence, courage, a sense of sisterhood with other women, and a sense of community with her fellow shareholders. There is a side story, a romantic side story with Paul Douglas too. And again, on a much deeper level, the movie reflects also a much more critical view on politics and on economics. The Solid Gold Cadillac shows already nepotism, high salaries of executives, and also the role the women play in all this. In that sense, the movie is quite a sister movie in a way with another film called Executive Suit, starring William Holden and starring Paul Douglas as well, in quite a similar role, but in Executive Suit, treated much like a drama. But again, the Solid Gold Cadillac, aside from being a very enjoyable movie, it's also worth watching for the part that Judy Holiday plays in it. And finally, I wanted to talk about the movie It Should Happen To You, a film that was released in 1954, again directed by George Cukor, which was the fifth and final collaboration between director George Cukor and Judy Holiday. And in this case, the movie talks about different topics than the ones we've seen so far, because as the film follows the frustrations and aspirations of Gladys Glover, played obviously by the wonderful Judy Holiday, who has been in New York for quite a while, trying to make a name for herself with no luck. So her rather unorthodox solution for this, having saved some money, she decides to rent a big billboard in Columbus Circle that only showcases her name, which leads to other signs. She starts hiring more billboards across the city and which prompts again a deeper conversation I should say on the need of notoriety which these days is quite relevant in the age of social media and influencers. The movie also features Jack Lemmon in his first film role and Peter Lawford. What I find really remarkable about It Should Happen To You is that in also her pursuit notoriety in terms of 
how she explains it as making a name for herself. I think this was particularly important for women, has been particularly important for women. This is evident in the movie in which again she is constantly faced with having to juggle different types of confrontation with men, which I think is particularly relevant because I read that initially Garson Kanan had started writing the part that Judy Holiday ultimately plays, thinking of a male character, thinking of casting Danny Kaye and eventually transformed it into a role for Judy Holiday, which again I think as I've said throughout the video turns this movie into a whole different story. Even though towards the end she buys the message of conformity, there are still several situations in which we see her standing for herself and claiming her right to again make a name for herself. Also another thing that the movie is very good at reflecting is the role of marketing especially in terms of advertising women again. The image that women reflect especially again in those days and as I was referring to before in this day and age we are still discussing these issues in a different way but all these topics the role of publicity and again the way women are seen the aspirations of women within all this environment environments are still something we are discussing today. So seeing, I should say, The Marrying Kind and It Should Happen to You and Born Yesterday, of course, can generate conversations that still touch on today's issues and that we are still, I think, trying to figure out both as a society and particularly as women. So I hope you find today's video interesting. As I said in the beginning, it is all a case of trying to pay tribute to the wonderful Judy Holiday and find different ways to make her movies more fun to watch in a contemporary context. So I hope that in that sense, this video is interesting for you. So now I would love to know what is your favorite Judy Holiday movie? And I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your love for classic movies and for your continuous support for this channel. As always, take care, stay safe and see you all soon or relatively soon for another video. Bye! So by all means, no excuses, go watch more Judy Holiday movies. It's funny how it worked out.